everybody welcome back to the channel well here it is it has arrived the fanatic complete war paint set from the army painter got this from Buzik fdb they gave me a super special price on this uh, to promote it on the channel uh, and uh, also to tell you guys that they're uh, going to be having all of these paints in store very soon so don't forget to check them out and you can also order this through them they don't have any in stock, but you can ask them for a special order and they'll get it for you. And, uh, you know, just I'm just very thankful for them for doing this for me. Uh, this is not cheap. Um, and this is a lot of paints, but I actually ended up selling my old paints to be able to get these ones. And I sold a whole bunch of other stuff. Anyways, let's just open it quickly because this is crazy. This box is humongous. Very heavy. Look at the colors. I mean... All right, I've seen some horror stories of uh, this box being completely... Oh, this is awesome. This is their new book. This is awesome. You know, of course, spray paint, dip, and done. I wish that was true because, to be honest, they're... I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, what's fun also, if you're missing any pieces, uh, you can just contact them. Yay, stickers. Ooh, look at some new ones. I don't have these stickers. Ooh, this is a cool one. I got to put some down on my... Oh, I like this Warpaints Fanatic. Yay. And look, now this is nice. Now, that kind of came off. Where are the, there's supposed to be two brushes, but look, you get an actual uh, master class moderate, uh, what is it? Moderate dry brush, which is the medium size one uh, compared to the bigger one. I already have them, uh, but look at that. Nice dry brush. Perfect. You get a regiment brush very nice tip on that now there's oh here's the other one here's another one here i think it's supposed to be four right something like that and uh, this is a small dry brush which is an angled one which i never liked originally but maybe now that i know how to actually use them and take care of my brushes that might actually come in handy now oh here it is got pushed over to the side here look at that all right and this is the Insane detail brush. Yeah, that's going to be nice. Perfect. I'm just going to put that back on for now. I don't want to touch the, leave it on there for now, just so that they're safe. This is what I'm going to be using uh, to test these paints out. All right. Uh, now, I'm not going to go through all the colors. Of course not. That would be ridiculous to go through all of them. But just, I mean, look at that rainbow shot, you know. Let me just... Uh, what I'm going to do is, not, yeah, anyways, so is, what's fun is that you have the white caps, which are like your colors. Oh, my God, they're in there. Good. Like burnt turf. And what's fun is that it actually tells you now what colors is it. It's the ochres and tans, and it's in the lighter range of the paint. And then also, if you take a look here, it actually has light yellowish brown. So for those of you who don't know what the heck a burnt turf is, light yellowish brown that to me just makes so much more sense coming out of this because i'm totally still a noob with colors i am not a color person like to know what to do with colors and stuff and so that having that is just amazing this here's your effects paints now it looks like all the effects ones which include the glowing ones so even the glow ones are considered effects you have an orange one here now, they're supposed to be preloaded with mixing balls. Oh, there they are. Yep. Okay. That one, too. And suppose it is dry blood has a really cool effect to it, too. So, the, I'm looking forward to testing so much of this out, especially on the channel, folks. All the metallic colors here have a whole bunch. All these different washes. I mean, you got a red tone wash. You got a dark red tone wash. That's going to be so cool. So how about we test uh, one of the ranges right now. We'll take a look. We'll grab one of my miniatures I have that's ready to paint uh, on black primer. And uh, we'll see how the coverage is. And so let's pick out one of these triads. It's probably going to be purple because I want to go with the purple for these guys. Uh, so I've got a whole range of purple here. Let's get them out of the box and let's paint up a miniature. Okay, so I'm here with an Inquisitor from um, Parabellum's Conquest. These are from the city-states. It was Pride in Black. Uh, you might have seen me do the assemble video quickly, and if you're on my Patreon, you saw the complete assembly of this. Now, I was supposed to do something special with these kind of paints, but because I got the War Paints Fanatics, and because these are Prime, I decided to 
actually paint these guys up and see how they turn out with I don't know today I'm just going to test out this purple okay so these are the purples in here which include a terrestrial titan alien purple cultist purple hexed violet violet coven and then kraken lavender <laughs> kraken lavender let this for what pale violet okay yeah very pale so i am horrible at highlighting and doing stuff like that so let's just get into it we're going to do his cape here the whole cape or cloak uh the rest of the body we might try with a different color uh, another triad uh but for today we're just going to try out this purple one here and see what that does all right here we go we're going to try this out here we're going to use this here terrestrial titan i'm going to put this down on the wet palette here oh okay all right comes out nice not a ton of um what you call it there um uh pigment or whatever it's called is it pigment or medium 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 i think is what it was all right I wet my uh, regimen brush is the one that comes with it all right so i wet it a little bit we're going to put this it's on the wet pile as you can see it's coming out really nice this is very 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 dark and we're just going to glop it on oh wow okay right off the bat the coverage really really nice super wow like it feels like i'm barely painting with anything here like this is mind-blowing like and you just put a little bit you don't want to have too much on your brush you don't want to get rid of all those nice details right here we go do the hood or the top part here you know i don't think i've ever used a regimen brush before from army painter i usually use my other brushes but uh wow this purple is going on really nicely now the thing is it's probably gonna have time to dry in between paints i hope and uh yeah so see i mean by putting not too much on my brush i'm able to get into all the little nooks and crannies and yeah like i said we're just going to be testing out a purple for now it's just to try them out and see what they're like especially on the black primer um i might do a um, gray primer and a zenithal highlight on another one we have i have two more of these um again these were supposed to be done for patrons only at one point but uh eh, you know when you get new paints and you want to test them out and i didn't have time to prime anything else i'm pretty busy life gets in the way sometimes so i decided i'll just try this out right off the bat so as you can see it's already starting to dry now you do have uh, paint retarders with this as well, little bottles that came with it uh, to make the drying time a little bit longer. Uh, that's if you want to do a lot of wet blending. I am not an advanced enough painter to do stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure if my brush is doing okay here, but let's see. It's hard to get inside these little nooks here, little crannies. See, to me, I would just leave this dark color on the inside part if it was up to me i would just do the one color on the inside maybe a few little highlights on the top here and maybe wherever like light gets in but frankly doing a perfect paint job on the inside parts here is not really necessary frankly because i can't even get in all there I'm trying i think i think i got everything hard to tell oh no let me some you can tell because there's no shine which is kind of cool actually is that there is a bit of a shine to this paint as you're painting so you know where you've been especially on top of black primer and it's so matte that it has no shine to it at all so as you can see it's uh, look i'll really show my wet palette it's really like it's not too too bad it's like coming out really nicely and then i'm just blotching this on here I haven't done the other side. Might as well go do the other side here. And very, I got to say, super nice coverage. Not sure if, you know, for those of you who are out there probably watching me paint this or you're probably saying, why isn't he washing his brush once in a while? I don't know. Do I have to add more water once in a while to my brush? Maybe, you know, just add a little bit. Come back, get more paint. 
and then go back over it. Oh, well, that might have actually worked better. <laughs> oh, I learn my own lessons sometimes. There we go. And if you haven't seen me create these bases, all those are shorts right now, but they're also on Patreon as full behind the scenes videos uh, to see how to use AK Interactive texture stuff to make really cool uh, bases. Now I'm going to try and get in here as much as possible without hitting everything out. Look, oh, 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 my brush is acting up. Brush, brush is acting up. I'm going to have to like wet that a bit. Now, did I get too much paint on there and now it's messing up my brush? Very, very possible. I'm the type that that happens to. That would be my type, my style, to screw up a brush. Now, I'm probably hitting the legs back here and the feet, but I might be putting a little, might be a little too wet, actually, but hard to get. These are some interesting miniatures to paint. Oh, I think I forgot all of this here, too. Okay, that's not so bad. There we go. And it's staying on the wet palette quite a bit so that I have time to work with it, which is great. I'll come back on the back here. The rest of this cape or cloak. Or... Now that I add a little too much water, I might have. I'm going to have to go back, I guess. But look at the coverage. I mean, I think I'm going too hard on the brush, though. I may be wrong. I hope I didn't wreck this brush. Already, brand new brush, and I wrecked it. Wouldn't surprise me, though. Really wouldn't surprise me. I'm going to have to add some more of that purple there. And by the way, there's mixing balls in every single bottle, two of them, which I'm glad Army Painter has listened to their community by putting this out there. And um, I'm just going to add a little bit more here. And making sure that we have um, mixing balls in these so that it's a little bit easier to shake them up and we don't have to just, you know, break our wrists shaking them up and so on and so forth. There we go. Good job covering again. Nice coverage. I think when I had put a little too much water, though, it kind of muffled up some of the, I don't know, kind of like put it too liquidy. So, you can go back, put some more on your brush. There you go. Just make sure I get that there. Oh, missed a spot here. Again, it's cool about having the matte black underneath. As you can see uh, the shine of the purple come through, and you can tell where you've missed some or uh, you haven't put any at all. It looks, I thought I put this here. I thought I did that part there, but it looks like I didn't. I thought I did this part too, but I'm not sure anymore. Okay, just gonna go over this quickly again. That, ooh, look at that. That that is nice. So far, so good. Oh, I have all the inside of this to do, don't I? Yep. Again, the inside part. Not sure I would do anything more because it is in shadows and it's not a big deal. I think. I think I've been off camera. Wasn't I like over here? Anyways, I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to keep it. I'll try and keep it right here. Um, pretty good. Look, as, as this is drying here, I'm just going to rinse my brush off here. Uh, let's let this dry for a second, and I'll come back with the next color. All right, the next color we're going to be testing out is Alien Purple. Uh, it's a little bit uh, lighter, as you can see here. Uh, it's also a color primer match. So this has, they have their own primer of Alien Purple as well, and it matches. This is a deep violet. Let's get this over on the uh, wet palette here. Just, uh, whoop. Uh oh. Oh, oh, here we go. I've got the shakes. So it comes out a nice glob. And then as you add your water to it, you can spread it out a bit more. Again, I think I put way too much water on my brush. I should have not put that much. Now, so here, this is how I, I, I'd see this. So it's still a bit wet in some areas, but we're going to start with at least the top part here. So what I would do is I'm going to go look. Oh my God, this is hugely different. And see what they did. I've seen the army painter doing this is that they just, 
completely recover what they just did. And in my opinion, that's kind of wasting paint, or did I put way too much on? Like, because now, I mean, there's not even any recesses. It's supposed to leave the recesses darker and not touch, but like, it pretty much covered the whole thing. Okay. So I guess here, what I would do is come on here and try not to get any into the complete recesses and leave that. Or did I not put enough water? Did I not water it down enough? And did I make a big mistake? <laughs> oh, I'm sure you guys are going to have fun with me in the comments about my painting skills. Yeah, I'm trying not to touch too much in the recesses, leaving some of those recesses, like trying almost, oh my god, my brush. See, so it's like almost getting to like a, almost like you were dry brushing almost certain areas. But see, now it's like, well, do I get the inside done? Or do I leave it? So if I come down here, you're supposed to, I was watching it. I mean, like, you're supposed to just go over whatever is high enough and touch whatever is high enough. And then technically, if your brush isn't touching certain areas, you leave that darker, right? Right. I don't know. And I should not go from bottom uh, top to bottom. I should go top. No, not bottom to top. I should go top to bottom. So I think in the back here is going to do a better job because we're trying to get. We just go quickly with the brush over. Oops, I just said I wasn't going to go bottom to top, and I'm doing that exact opposite of what I said. Now, I think I'm doing this right. I feel like I'm doing this right. I feel like I'm off camera again. <laughs> so I'll bring it back into the middle here. So you can get... I'm trying to make it that I don't push my brush too hard so that the dark spots stay dark. <laughs> and at the higher raised edges, get most of the paint. Yeah, that kind of works there because there's like a bit of a, a bit more texture to it. Now this is going to be interesting. Okay, see, so I, I mean, I left some of the recesses there. I guess this, some of this can get touched a bit in the back here. Not too much. You know, it's not showing much. Even in the back here, we could get a little bit, just a little bit in the lower part here, maybe where light might seep through, you know? We come back here in the front. You can see I'm doing like heavy, hard strokes so that it doesn't touch too much in the recesses. And I think I have ruined this brush. Not even the first day, not even just one mini, and I've ruined the brush. And that doesn't look so bad. Does it? That's not bad at all. All right, let's let this dry, and we're going to move on to the next color. All right, the next color we're going to be looking at is the Cultist Purple, which is the third one in the purples, and this one's considered a strong violet. Get this down on the wet palette here. Don't know much we're going to take. There we go. Put that. You can see it's not much lighter than the one that was before the Alien Purple. 
This is why I'm like, okay, six in the flexible triad or extended triad or whatever they want to call it. Um, here, I'm going to do that this time. So now my wet palette's not completely on one side and I'm painting the other side here. It's just, I want to make sure, like, I don't know if it's worth putting on six coats of paint on one miniature. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go a little heavy, but just on the top parts like so. And that's it. Like where light's really going to hit and leave the rest in the shadows so that when we come back again, that's the thing. So here though, I would go a little bit more and just a little bit, not too much. Again here, well, pretty much cover. You can leave some of it. So we leave that in the shadow right there. And you come up to the top here and you just, you know, grab the little edges there. And again here, so in the back, I probably would just go find whatever is higher than the rest. And then just slowly add texture to it. Kind of, well, if that's what you want to call it. A little bit more oomph. And keeping, trying to keep that alien purple still showing. And the, what is it? Terrestrial Titan purple showing in the bottom, bottom part. Now, they do have a purple tone. My question would be now, would I put a purple tone over all this afterwards? Because I have a feeling, which happened in the past, is that their washes or their tones would just mute everything and give everything the exact same color. It would like shade everything into the same color. So if I put the purple down, it's like it's going to turn the light purples into darker purples, the dark purples into even darker, and then just mute everything kind of thing. See, I'm just going slowly here. I just want to see. Okay, so that hits the light. That hits the light. That hits the light. This hits the light. That's hitting the light a bit, you know, just. See, this is like edge highlighting a bit. And hitting even more. Just the edges. But then, like, you got three more colors. What in the world? Like, I don't know if that's necessary. I'm going to do it because I want to test out the range on this. But to be honest, is it necessary? I don't know. But what's cool is that you can decide, okay, well, I want to go super dark, super duper, and then bright, and then super duper bright. You can do that by doing like, let's say it's from one to six, right? Let's say one being the lightest and six being the darkest. Well, then you could go like, I'm going to do one, three, six or one, three, five. And then you could do two, four, six and you could do, you know, or whatever. You can do a combination of the colors to get the look you're trying to get. That's actually looking not so bad. I don't know. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? The top. <laughs> Forgot to do just a tip. This, you know, just whatever's hitting that sunlight. If there is sun in this dark world of conquest, do just a little, little touches here and there. There you go. That's looking pretty cool. All right. Uh, I go through. Got two more, three more colors to go. All right, I don't know if you guys are sick of watching this video, but we're moving on to Hexed Violet now. This is the uh, almost lighter version. It's going to be called Violet. Gee, it's just plain violet. So if you're looking for violet color, this is your violet. Oh, my God. Why are these bottles? There we go. I'm not going to put too much because I'm not going to use too much. But this is supposed to start being like your highlighting stages, right? So you're not supposed to have... Put my brush here. not supposed to have a ton going on. I also switched my brush up. I went with one of my smaller brushes because I'm really, really just going to be focusing on edges here. This is why I'm like, how in the world could I get 
two more colors as highlights on this. And I frankly do not know. But we're going to get through it anyways. Yes, this is a very long painting video. This is way longer than I usually do. But I want you guys to see the coverage you're getting. And I want, you to, I want it to be like as open as possible and as straightforward as possible because there's some other videos out there that people are, I think, are just, you know, showing you the good sides of it and all and how simple it is to use and all that. But I mean, it is simple, I have to say. You know, just slightly coating. Very, very slightly. Now, this time I won't forget the hood part, but there isn't... I see there's like just a few little nooks and crannies here and there to get get like not much to do. Just stipple it on a bit here, a little bit of I mean, yeah. Could be worse, right? My painting can always be worse. So again here just trying to like create one little line now i'm going to try to insane detail brush after this because i got to get really precise on what needs to be touched and what doesn't need to be touched with the super light colors right all right You go, oh, am I going off again there? No, it looks like I'm okay. You can just want to, and just here a little bit. You might have got a little too much paint there on my brush. But here you go, look at that. See, like nice and smooth, not too thick. Nice little brush strokes, keeping the underneath there. That light purple still there. The dark purple is still there too, but you just getting. I wonder, I mean, you could almost dry brush this. I mean, maybe that's the point. The next one I'll do like the super quick, dirty, or super quick detailed highlights and then do a dry brush with the last one. Like, would that work? I don't know. No, too much there, there, but I mean, is it worth this much time on a miniature? I mean, if I had nothing, if I had only like 10 miniatures to paint and that was my job, like I had 10 miniatures to paint for a guy or, you know, doing a commission for someone, uh, sure. I would maybe take this much time. I mean, look, there's been half an hour. Yeah, about half an hour. And that's just me recording. That I mean, that's not me off waiting for this to dry. And actually, like, painting just a cloak. Just a cloak. And is it worth it? I mean, it's nice. It's a cool-looking cloak. To me, I'd still put a wash on that. All right, now we got how many colors are we done? One, two, three, four. We've done four. We got two more colors to do, guys. Oh, let's move on to the next color. All right, so the next one is Violet Coven. I already put it down my white palette. You don't need to see me do that and force my hand on it. However, this one, even though I shook it up a bit, you can still hear the mixing balls. Uh, there is some color discoloration there on the Violet Coven. It had a bit of uh, pigmentation or medium mixed in there. Now, I'm using their insane detail brush and don't ask me why i'm using my insane detail brush because i'm just gonna get really nitty gritty with the insane detail and just go right on the edges here and just that's way too much paint that looks horrible scratch it along there there's like a little 
spot there. Now I think I'm probably wrecking this brush too. Ah, I'm horrible at brushes. You just want to get really insanely detailed. <laughs> which I don't know what that means. I'm just grabbing these little areas here like that. I mean, see, I can get like this little, these little tags. I don't even know what these are called on the ends here of the, so like, even then, like, what should I even highlight more? Like, see, I'm whoops. Uh, even as an insane detail brush, I'm gaining way too much paint on it and getting like the point would be pretty much now just looking at okay so a bit of light comes down here go here a bit here there's a bit of light that's probably going to hit off of that edge here we're going to hit a bit of the edge and then just come down here a bit and just edge highlight with stippling here There you go. Just like that. You know, just a little bit more on the shoulders here. I'm assuming this is what this is meant for. You know, just you look at it from above and you're like, okay, where is the light hitting it? Where do we need to reflect more light? Here's a nice spot here. You know, a little bit here. And again, but look at how light we've come from that dark purple you know like kind of ridiculous how we've gone from that to this here and so here i'm just gonna you can see i'm just gonna look at it from a certain angle and get what needs to be highlighted the most and that i don't think you need to go all the way down the cape with this miniature i mean other ones you may want to do i don't know what you want to do but like i'm just seeing okay well the light's going here a bit more light's going definitely here and then here maybe oops yeah messed that up a bit now maybe a bit more here a bit more underneath here not too too much though and then we look at the bottom here and definitely like see we got a lot of light here and a little bit here some more there a little bit of stippling action here maybe and a little bit there see like there's not much more i would do with this a little like the inside like i said i wouldn't waste my time at all on it that's looking pretty cool all right one more color okay so i've actually taken out now my dry palette my weird looking dry palette here because I'm going to do the last one, Crack and Lavender, with their new dry, with their dry brush that was included in it. Okay, so it's the Masterclass Moderate Dry Brush. Okay, this is what I'm going to use. And I'm going to just try and slightly use this on as a final highlight. And I don't know if this is necessarily the ideal part of doing this. So as you can see, I, I, I'm keeping my brush dry. I didn't wet it a little bit. And the point of this kind of dry palette is that you have a whole bunch of textures and you're not losing um the wetness so i'm just so that because if you use a dry a paper towel i find you're going to use you're going to lose a lot of the um oh man what's the word i'm looking for the 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 wetness of the paint whereas when you use it on a nice wet a dry palette like this like a dry brush palette there we go so this might tie it in nicely not putting too much. <clears throat> Oops, I might have put too much there. Just going nice and gentle. Just where, again, where the light would hit. It's tying in all the colors together.
Okay, well, frankly, that looks pretty decent. So, you know what? I'm going to leave it at that, guys. <laughs> and uh, I might come back and show you some of uh, the metallics because I got some armor to paint on this guy. So that'll be another video. And also, all his skin is supposed to be super light. So I'm going to try and find something in the box that's going to go along with that. And we'll see how that turns out. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoy uh, this very first episode of War Paints Fanatic Testing. I think that's what we're going to have to call this, a new series here. And uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Hit that like button. Comment down below what colors you would like to see tested as either the whole six triad, or you don't even know it's a six ad, <laughs> uh, triad, specific colors, metallics, uh, whatever you want to try. I'll see what I can do while painting minis that I need to paint. Anyways, again, thank you for watching. We'll catch you all in the next one.